I just can't get away from a good time. It sets up deep in the pocket. Goes down the field for Smith. Oh, he caught it! This ball is drilled to center field. Pilar at the wall. Gets there and hangs on. Pop shelf where Mama hides the cookies. This infield is a great wall of China. Nothing's getting past us. Good D behind you, Brian. Good D all around. Get the damage out of here! He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. It's not always whether you win or lose. It's whether you're winning or losing. I guess that's what I'm saying, Brooksy. You get that through your head? Welcome to another edition of Sports Chatter with Bax and Patter. I'm your host, Brandon Bax. And I'm Patrick Reed. It is Wednesday, February 15th, 2017. Lots going on, Brandon. Well, you know what? When we sat down to plan this week's show, we were thinking, this seems like an easy week. We're going to talk a few trades. We're going to recap the NFL uh, the NFL season. And then all of a sudden, February 14th happened. And we're not talking Valentine's Day. We're not talking Valentine's Day. No, there was a big trade in uh, the NBA. Uh, the Toronto Raptors have acquired Serge Ibaka. We're going to talk about that. The James Dolan and Charles Oakley saga continues. We're going to talk that. We're going to talk NHL. A lot of stick issues. A lot of um, a lot of leaf leaf uh, leaf news we're going to talk about, and uh, and a coach was hired and fired in Montreal. So we are going to talk that as well as some MLB news. Uh, uh, spring training is going to start up. We're going to have our regular news and notes segment, our uh, injury wrap up, and um, we'll do our goats as, and much more. So stick around. Uh, Sports chatter with Bax and Patters starting up. Don't travel, don't double dribble. I want a good, clean game and no back talk. I figured since I'm going to be like Mike, I might as well dress like Mike, you know. Lowry, half court heave, a prayer at the buzzer. Oh! Hey, stop hogging it, Mike. We're your teammates. How do you intend to match up to the Squires' strong inside game? It's a great question. Tomorrow, after the game, I, Jackie Moon, will wrestle a bear. And we're back, and we're talking NBA, Patrick. Yeah, uh, I mean, Raptors still struggling a little bit here. They lost last night in Chicago, uh, the 11th time uh, 15 games. in 15 games. They put up a big L. Yep, but uh, I think help is on the way, and uh, we're talking about Serge Ibaka, a guy who Masai Ujiri has long coveted and has long wanted on this team. Kind of a big three in Toronto now. They have finally got their guy the guy that can play the power forward and have five legit NBA starters in their uh, starting five. Yeah, I'd say more of a medium three there, Bax. Uh, Serge does bring uh, a lot to the table, uh, kind of that Bismack-esque uh, player, uh, but actually has some uh, offensive upside. He can hit the three. He doesn't hit it a lot in volume. Uh, 40% shooter, though, but if you're only shooting one or two a game, that's a uh, common uh, factor. I still think they're missing something, but uh, I, I think Masai, uh, who I was getting a, a feeling was starting to lose favor with the fans, I think he's turned back into the uh, quote-unquote Messiah. Yeah, let's just uh, talk a little bit about what uh, the Raptors have given up in this trade, and people are saying not really a whole heck of a lot. They have two first-round picks in this year's draft. They've given up the lower of the two, as well as Terrence Ross, a guy who they were talking about sending out anyways. He was having kind of a, a pretty good year off the bench, but uh, they could... Uh, expend him in in place of a starter like Serge Serge Ibaka who are the Raptors are now they're kind of they're sitting seven games back of the Cavaliers but they've been given a a blow in the injury uh in the injury front uh, with Kevin Love being out we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit but um now I think they're kind of poised to make a little bit of a run whether it not necessarily being the standings but once playoff time rolls around a lot of teams probably won't want to play the Raptors now. Yeah, they're just sit currently sitting fifth in the East. They dropped a long way. I mean, teams like Boston and, and Washington and uh, the Atlanta, Atlanta right. Falcons, who everyone thought was out, and they were selling off. They've all passed them here. So I think Serge uh, is some welcome help. Uh, I, I don't want to attribute to it because I know Masai is a, a methodical and he wouldn't jump on it. But, uh, I mean, DeRozan was asking for help. Kyle Lowry was throwing shade. Uh I think it's a great move, but I don't think he's done. Like I said, I think they need a legitimate three-point shooter, uh, somebody to play the two, uh, sorry, the three, uh, slide into the four there, somebody that can consistently hit the three-point shot. Uh, Kyle Kyle Lowry is uh, a bit inconsistent. Same with Pat Pat. When he is healthy, he is inconsistent on shooting that three as well. Demar has uh, has those short-range jumpers, but. Uh, they need somebody in this NBA that can can hit the three. Uh, there's some names been bandied about uh, Gallinari down in uh, Denver. There, he could could 
provide some help, and I don't think you'd have to give up a whole lot. I mean, guys that you could kind of potentially see Masai throwing up on the block. Uh, I mean, JV's got to be out there, doesn't he? Yeah, I think I think JV could be a guy um, that could move. And um, basically, this could have gone um, one of several uh, different ways before they made the trade. And on Sunday, Kyle Lowry was kind of kind of uh, really, really upset with the way that the team has been losing games as of late and how the play calling down the stretch. Uh, a lot of people were saying, you know what, it's either Dwayne Casey or it's Masai or it's a big trade or they do nothing. And if they do nothing, nothing is going to happen this season. Uh, they decided to go the trade route. I didn't think Casey was ever going to get fired. Um, he needed the help. He's now got the help that he needs, especially on the defensive end. So um, I think that they did the I right move. Just want to trading. jump in there. Uh, I do agree it's a great move trading. But I, I hear a lot of, of Dwayne Casey uh, not being able to, uh, to provide the offense and that kind of thing and doesn't draw up the correct plays or whatever. But the players on the court have to play the game. Mm -hmm. If you watch the team, it's Kyle and it's DeMar. Or it's Kyle to DeMar or DeMar to Kyle. They pass between each other. Nobody else seems to touch the ball there. And uh, you see uh, in the game against the Pistons, I believe, it got down to seven seconds. Uh, Kyle wasn't open, so DeMar dished to Damari Carroll, and Damari Carroll bobbled the ball. Of course he's going to bobble the ball. He hasn't touched it in 30 minutes. Yeah. Like, they, they need to spread that offense around. I, I don't know what their offensive scheme is, if it is doing Casey, but I think those two need to, to involve other people. That's why I think JV is available for the taking, because they don't use him. What? They don't use him on the offense. He's a defensive liability. They don't play him in the fourth quarter because they can't trust him to lock down leads, but they don't give him the ball to, on the offensive. Yeah, so I, I, I think, don't understand what they're trying to do. I think over the last four years, too, when they've had Kyle and DeMar kind of be the, the focal point of the offense, uh, teams have finally realized um, the offense of the Raptors it hasn't changed much over the last few years, and that's the stability, I guess, of the franchise. But then that's also kind of been their curse because people have finally realized it's a pick and roll, it's a high screen by one of their bigs, and uh, if DeMar's not making a shot or isn't open or Kyle's not making his three or driving, uh, and if that's not going... And they're not going to win many yeah, Early in the season, you could see they were lighting up the scoreboard, scoring like, like crazy. Like it, it was easy for them. But now, uh, as they come down to the stretch, you see uh, the defenses tighten up. Everybody's figured it out. And, I mean, you saw uh, DeMar the other d night uh, begging for a foul, and that's just good D in the last five minutes there. That's good D. That's playoff defense. And you see it in the playoffs when these guys get shut down over and over again. This is this is why. Uh, you're not showing anybody anything new. But now you have to you have to really take into account the experience that's going to be brought in here with Ibaka. He has NBA Finals experience. He's made the playoffs, I think, four of six years or six of eight years, something like that. Like he He's a really talented player. He's going to be able to protect the rim with, well with JV. He'll be able to get you more boards and blocks, and he can stretch the floor because he can hit that that shot that Carroll can't necessarily hit all the time or that Patterson can't necessarily hit all the time, and it'll really make defenses stay honest uh, if you leave this guy open. I mean, he's a 20-point, 10-rebound guy in Orlando. If you leave this guy open, if DeMar and Kyle aren't on, he's going to beat you. Yeah, Sir Dry Blocker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a great defender, uh, uh, and... Uh, and that's going to really, I mean, you got to hope that it's going to penetrate through the rest of the team and, and make them want to, like uh, like Biombo did last year with his uh, Dikembe Mutombo wags and that kind of thing, blocking shots. This guy's a, a two-time defensive player of the year winner in the NBA. Yep. So do you think another reason why maybe uh, Masai chose right now to go after uh, uh, th this player in particular is because they smelled kind of some blood in the water with the Cavs? And Kevin Love going down for a month and a half, and maybe they wanted to show the Boston's and the Washingtons, hey, we're not backing down. We're all in for this year. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think you count Cleveland out of it. I mean, LeBron's going to take over anyways. Uh, I don't think Love going down is a huge deal. Could even help them in the long run because he'll be fr fresh in the playoffs. Good, yeah. uh, but as far as uh, those other uh, teams, the Atlanta, your... your um, Boston, Boston and, Washington. and Washington. That's definitely. Uh, I mean, wow. Uh, John Wall's really giving it, giving it a run this year. But yeah. I think uh, adding Surge is definitely a, a good move that will help uh, pull them at least even with them. So this wasn't the only big basketball news that was going on uh, this week. The New York Knicks uh, storied franchise and saga continues, and in not a positive way this week uh, mm -hmm. with the whole James Dolan and uh, Charles o Charles Oakley. 
<clears throat> um, saga continues. Though. Yeah, what do you think of that? an absolute mess down there in New York I, is what I think it is. For a $3.3 billion valued franchise, it is an absolute tire fire. Yeah, you're On old. the court, and now you're seeing off the court. like, And, and that's where it stems from. The off-court issues stem to the to the on-court issues and then i mean you you have your gm in uh uh phil jackson he basically doesn't care. He no doesn't care. oh the guy's mailing it he's 71 <laughs> years old he's cashing the check and, and going home and having a nap i think he wants to get rid of mellow yeah, he wants he's to get rid of all their good players tweeting out things about, about mellow or not about mellow and who knows what's going on and i mean rumor is that it could even be that he gave uh charles oakley the ticket to try and stir up some trouble down there in New York, but that's a conspiracy theory. Uh, no, no proof <laughs> whatsoever. But I mean, in the, but at this point, would you really be surprised? No, no, he <laughs> wouldn't. And I mean, it could all just be a ploy to try and get rid of Mello. But who knows? Like, it's just a mess down there. And I mean, now you've seen uh, Dolan. He banned Charles Oakley. The entire state of New York, or that general area, New York City, went nuts. Even the Rangers fans were. We're crying for uh, redemption there. And it took the NBA meeting. Adam Silver, the commissioner of the league, met with James Dolan and Charles Oakley and had James Dolan revoke the ban. Uh, the uh, NBA All-Star Game is coming up this weekend. Yep. Um, should be interesting. I mean, I like watching the skills comp. The game is kind of meh. The dunk, the dunk contest is what dunk I always love to, is... love to tune in for. Um, is Zach Levine going to do it again, or is uh, is the kid from Orlando going to take it? Yeah, uh, I mean, he, he was getting tips from Zach Levine. Blake Griffin. Okay, Blake Griffin. He was uh, yeah. giving tips yeah. out as well. Be yeah. interesting to see. Uh, and uh, you got to love the three point shooter competition. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I don't know necessarily about uh, about the All Star Game itself. I'm no, not a huge fan of All Star Games. It's going to be 200 to 180. So yeah, exactly. Nobody game, plays but. defense. They all yeah. just play nice and uh, have a good time. Yeah. And the the skills comp is what you want to watch. It's just like the NHL one. That's yeah. the most interesting part of the thing. Yeah, I like to tune in for our local talent to see how Kyle and Demar and them are going to be representing Toronto. I like so the Young be, Stars Game as well. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. Yep. Yeah. I don't. Know, I think there's any Raptors in that one this year. No, is there? I don't I believe don't, so. I don't think so. Maybe Pirtle. Um, maybe Pirtle, maybe Pirtle. Pirtle yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else NBA wise? I mean, no, it was kind of a busy week in the was. NBA I, this week. I just want to give a shout out to Andrew Wiggins. This kid is amazing. I yeah. love this kid. I, and I mean, one day, who knows? Maybe he'll he'll come and join the Raptors. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, he could be that little, small, little small forward there. I'd be I'd like him more than Demari Carroll in that spot. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we're gonna head over to some NHL talk. So don't you go away. The NHL is next. Listen up. We're still in this thing. We just need a quick one. Listen up, Cash! We gotta work harder than them, okay? What is icing? Well, um, icing happen when uh, the puck come down, bang, you know, before the other guys. Doesn't count unless you go Bardownski. You gotta go Bardownski, Schmelz. It's knuckle puck time! Welcome back to Sports Chatter. We're talking NHL and what we're the hell is going on in the NHL right now? Bats? I mean, people are using their sticks like they're like they're chopping firewood There's right now. There's sword fights all over the place. Suspensions all over the place. Injuries all over the place. I don't really know what what ha what happened kind of this week, but um, someone must have been watching some like Lord of the Rings or something. Swords <laughs> like it's crazy. It's crazy out there. Yeah, it is pretty intense. I mean, let's let's start with that Gustav Nyquist. Uh, not known for being a dirty player or anything like that. I don't uh, think so at all. <laughs> no, and uh, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it because it is, well, or close your eyes if you're squeamish because yeah. this guy about took uh, Jared Spurgeon's eye out. Yeah, he, he really wound up and absolutely gave it to him. Well, well hold on, his stick got stuck. <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah, <laughs> the, I mean, his you... stick got stuck as he's winding up and baseball slapping Jared Spurgeon in the face with it after after the play. Yeah, he got a, got a little shove. From behind, from Spurgeon, and routine hockey play. Uh, routine hockey play. I mean, there were more egregious plays in the in the game, but this guy just snapped, <laughs> like just full. And I laugh now, but it's because Spurgeon's okay. okay yeah. But I mean, the guy just pitchforked him right in the face, and uh, I mean. To try and say after, oh no, my stick got stuck. This is the day in, in, in age and replays. I'm sure there was a gif of it, like 30 seconds after yeah. it happened. 
Like, just unbelievable. So, because he's a first offender, he only gets six games, and he may appeal it as well as... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't even think he went in, went to the hearing. Uh, I think it was an over-the-phone over, over the phone hearing. Sounds like it's just six games straight up. So, the um, other the other stick incident was Antoine for Matt. Um, well, there was a few. I mean, uh, <laughs> Chara got whacked between the, uh, between the legs there. I believe it was the same night. And then there was another guy who got whacked in the face as yeah. well. Yeah. I, I mean... But the Antoine Vermette one was kind oh. of interesting because it was an official. Yeah, that was last night. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Antoine Vermette not happy with the official uh, was not his game. I mean, he's a he's a great uh, faceoff guy, sixty percent on the faceoffs, which is uh, unbelievable. Mm. Uh, not doing well. He lost majority. I think he was thirteen percent on the night for his faceoffs. So he was a little frustrated. I think the way the puck was being dropped is what happened. Yeah. And, um, and then after the puck was dropped, he lost another draw. Uh, he tried to tap the ref, but turns out he's swinging at the ref, and you can't touch officials at all in any sports, no. and nor should you. And um, and uh, that's an automatic game uh, misconduct. And then he gets the ten games. Right yeah, automatic ten game suspension. Uh, Again, no no real history for him, but I mean, yep. it's 10 games automatic. He's probably going to try and appeal, but I don't think he's getting anywhere. I mean, Duncan Keith last year got uh, that 20-gamer, which yeah. uh, for hitting the ref from behind, d- rightly deserved. Yeah. But this thing, I, I don't know what went through his head if he was just trying to get his attention to say, hey, that that draw wasn't fair. Because you see, he puts a stick down. He's the road team. Then he lifts his stick up. You're supposed to have your stick down uh, as the road team. And the ref just dropped the puck, or the linesman just dropped the puck. So he stepped toward him and gave him a whack. And it just didn't make sense. So I don't know if everybody's lost their mind there. Or yeah, what. and I don't even think we'd be talking about this if it wasn't for all the other stick yeah, incidents. Exactly. But you know what? We just thought it was it's kind of epidemic. neat to throw it in the, in the show this week because uh, there's been so many of them. Um, the big uh, NHL news that also happened on February 14th this week was... Um, Claude Julien kind of surprising the world. Yeah, I and mean, surprising I surprised. Jury. He wanted that to be his yeah, day, no but then kidding, right eh? after he makes the trade, um, Julien is hired by the Montreal Canadiens, yeah, and Michel Therrien was fired. Actually surprised he got fired by Boston. I mean, they're, they're not a good team. Boston is not a good team. Uh, Tuka Rask has been terrible this year. Uh, Bergeron has been hurt lately. What does he have in, in the, on, the, on the team? Not a whole lot. No, a couple Boston, good young yeah. players. Charles, 39 years old, can barely skate anymore. Um, <clears throat> they traded away Dougie Hamilton, Milan Lucic. I mean, it's not necessarily a huge rebuild in Boston, but I think that it was time for them to make a change. Well, it's like Vancouver. They're trying to patch it up, and yeah. it's just not working out. Yeah. But, I mean, 10 years as uh, as the coach there, I guess it was time. They won the Cup in 2011. He's, by all accounts, one of the greatest coaches uh, by all uh, named by all of his peers. I mean, by, Mike Babcock had nothing but good things to say about him. Um, but, yeah, didn't take long, what, seven days, and he's uh, head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, back with them uh, after being fired in, what, 2007? 2007. So what, I, so what is, uh, surprises me about all this is, out of two um, franchises who historically hate each other, yeah, and this coach has coached for both of them now multiple times. How how what is the dynamic between going back and forth, especially in the rooms with these coaches? Like what like how does that? What it's is that been dynamic? nine years. I don't think there's anybody that is still there that Claude Julien would would have coached. Uh, there aren't too many people that can coach in Montreal just because you have to be able to speak French. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They tried Randy Cunningworth. That did not work out. Um, but, yeah, no, I think it's going to be good. Uh, you got it. I mean, there was a meeting uh, just after Claude Julien got fired, actually, reported uh, with the, the leadership core of the <clears throat> Montreal Canadiens, your Pacioretty, your Carey Price, your Shea Weber, mm-hmm. with uh, uh, Bergevin, uh, but no Mar- Michel Therrien, so I don't know if that was kind of the... Uh, that might have been the end of the line right there. Exactly. Him. The, hey, do you, how do you feel about Claude Julien? Now, did Therrien lose the room, do you think? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I I think he lost the room a long did time ago. Did Price stare down, maybe, when he was pulled from that one game? Yeah. Uh, even I before think that? Even before that. I mean, he's not a nice guy. Yeah. By all accounts. I mean, I never met the man, uh, but he just doesn't... And the fans there never liked him. Really? Never liked Michelle Terry, even when they were winning. I mean, you got the best goalie in the league, and you, you, you can't. So you've got. Jump so so over now the they edge. have the change. The change that every every Canadian sports fan always clamors for first is the changing coach, the change in voice in the room. 
How are they going to score now more goals? And how is Julian going to make Carey Price play like Carey Price? How is he going to do that? Because I don't think the coach can do any of that. No, well, I think, uh, actually, you know what? I, I got to say for Carey Price, he does seem distracted. Hopefully with the coach change, uh, that'll be help, helpful. He'll be more hap- uh content in the room and that kind of thing one thing that hasn't been me- mentioned about Carey Price which could be a factor uh, he did just have a baby not too long yeah. ago I mean I'm a father myself uh, sleepless nights that kind of thing it, it could affect him in the rink yeah. uh, I don't want to get distracted maybe. exactly I, nobody's really talked about it either so I yeah. don't think they want to but uh, it is a possibility so hopefully I mean Claude Julian can uh bring some more focus to the room and bring an identity. Like uh, Carey Price said, they'd lost their identity, so hopefully they can uh, ship shape that up. I'll say this about the Canadians too, is that they're, I mean, for the way they've played right now, they're lucky they're in the division they're in because yeah. if they're in the other Eastern Conference division, they're not even in the playoffs right now. They're in a mm-hmm. wildcard spot, so uh, I think that they're still going to be okay just because of the fact I that think they, need they to only have Boston and to Toronto tweet. behind them. But. I think they do need to, to make a trade mm-hmm. here uh, coming up to deadline March 1st. Uh, and do something. I don't think they need the Matt Duchesne move. Maybe uh, maybe the Martin Hansel move, though. I mean, he's a big center. Uh, they are not not especially deep uh, through the middle of the ice. I, I mean, he's a veteran presence. And how many years have we gone down this road with the Montreal Canadiens at the trade deadline needing scoring help on the wing? Well, needing scoring help and some In general, size. but yeah. <laughs> Every year, it seems, we're having the same conversation. Every year. These guys just can't put the puck I did in the have another note on Claude Julien for all you uh, analytics fans out there. The Boston Bruins were first in uh, in Corsi when he got fired. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. For an old school coach. Well, exactly. That's interesting. Well, you have Patrice Bergeron on your team. Yeah, right? true. He's... He's, he's, a, he's a darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so other than the coaching change, anything else NHL-wise we want to talk about? I know we want to talk a little Leafs, but anything else before we get into them? Uh, yeah, um, the NHL, uh, the CHL contracts are uh, coming out uh, to light. There's a big investigation going on, especially with the CHL uh, possibly uh, looking at uh, having to play, pay players minimum wage to play. Um, they crush the league. Well, it could, but, yeah, yeah. Or you, I mean, you go down to, what, a three-team league around yeah, here? Yeah, pretty much. Kitchener, yeah. London, and uh, uh, probably one of the Toronto teams, yeah. Oshawa. Yeah, pretty much. That's about it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that could be interesting coming out, uh, I believe, soon uh, to see just how much these CHL teams are making. I'm not for that because there's only a few teams that are actually making any money. Well, but exactly. uh, we'll have to we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the hunters are doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple other things. Uh, the Flames have signed Matt Bartowski uh, to a pro uh, PTO, a professional tryout. Former NHLer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I think this is going for the expansion. Uh, just so they have somebody on their roster that they can expose. Which uh, we will talk more expansion draft. I think we're looking to drop our uh, our own expansion draft for yeah. the. Uh, we'll get that going as we Vegas get closer. Nights. Maybe one of the weeks that uh, there isn't a whole heck of a lot of big news coming oh, out. A week like this, right? Yeah, or a, week, <laughs> a week like this. Yeah, and we haven't even talked Toronto Maple Leafs yet. Uh, they had a big win last night. Yeah. A, a big uh, win after a very a very suspect three one loss to the Sabers on Saturday, where they didn't really look too great. They came back and absolutely blew the doors off it. Seven one against the Islanders. Yeah, a huge win. I mean, may, maybe. Uh, John Tavares likes likes the look of a touchdown on his uh, on his I, stash. I can't sheet. see <laughs> any reason why John Tavares would not want to come here in 2018. But that's any that's reason he another wouldn't? no any reason that he would not want. to Oh, come okay, here. yeah. He, I, I mean that, but that's a discussion for for closer to 2018. Uh, yeah, I think we'll, as of July we'll 1st, do that in the summer. I think as of July 1st, uh, the Islanders can try to re-sign him. So um, yeah. Uh, Matthews looking like a beauty. Twenty seven goals here. Yeah, he's only a few goals now behind Sidney Crosby. Who the heck would have thought that coming yeah, into this no year? No kidding. Uh he's the first Leafs uh, rookie to do that since Sergey Berzin yeah. in nineteen ninety six, ninety seven, and Berzin uh or Bearson, he was uh, he was 25 at the time, and he's only seven goals behind Wendell Clark's uh, rookie right. scoring on record. On pace uh, for 40. On pace for 40. We'll see if he can get uh, get that. Fo- that would be amazing. That, that be would amazing? be amazing. It would be amazing. And I mean, this franchise. You know, I'm not a Leaf fan. Yeah. But this franchise needs it. Yeah, I've been oh, chirping you for years <laughs> on this franchise. They really do need it. So it's not only it's not only Matthews that's doing it. You got Marner and Nylander rolling. Bozak was rolling last night. Yeah. Oh, a whole heck Josh of a lot Lebo. of guys were. Josh 
Josh Levo only played nine minutes. He had three points um, the on, the, on, the, on the fourth line, uh, filling in for Soshnikov, who's injured right now. Yeah, but he's really making an impact. No, Soshnikov is is ready to play, uh, but Levo is getting the, the game again tonight. Uh, meritocracy, right? Yeah. Uh, Babcock lo- loves his meritocracy, and uh, he played well last night, so he's getting another another showcase. This could be a uh, a potential like showcase for uh, trade coming up. Yeah, and I think also the guy that they're trying to showcase is um, is JVR yeah. uh, because they might be able to get something for him if they can't re-sign him and you want to have money for he's, the summer. He's he's still got a, another, what, year left on his deal. So, on a friendly team he's a big deal. scoring winger. I, I don't... As soon as you get rid of a big scoring winger, what did we just talk about in Montreal? They're looking for a big scoring winger. Yep. As soon as you get rid of a guy like that, uh, you're looking for him again. Yeah. It's... It's so who so who's the, who's going to be the odd man out then? You think Tyler Bozak? Oh, Bozak's done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I I still like him as a player too, and he's really unless helped these young he guys takes along. a serious pay cut. He's making what four point two million now. If he goes down to a two million pay cut, I think they can re-sign him no problem. And you can't get rid of Kadri at this point. Kadri's got twenty one goals and twenty. Well, Bozak would be a great third line center. Yeah, like. I don't even know. I think like, he is I remember a third line looking at now, this team but... and seeing him on the first line. Yeah, and you're just like that guy is not a first line. So center. you see, so you so the years that he was the first line center, tank. Yeah. Now he's basically the third line center because you got Kadri and you got Matthews in front of. Him. They had this is a three line deep team now with the fourth line that can chip in with yeah. Matt Martin. Oh, and like, I this and is I a, think Freddie Gauthier is going to be back up here I before think, long. Most likely, yeah. Like I, I know Ben Smith uh, is back uh, from injury, and, and I mean he's not playing bad, but I think Babcock really is high on uh, Freddie Gauthier. Yeah. I mean, I think he's going to be switching that that new model that he just switched to play fast, play right to play six five every shift because <laughs> you know Babcock loves that. And as much as they need the defense right now, I, I at this point you can't sell the future to get a Shattenkirk right now because you're not ready right now. You're re- you, you're you looking this summer or next summer to get that big defenseman under contract, even even this summer, hopefully. You know who I'm looking at? It's Shea Theodore down Ooh. in Anaheim. Okay. Shea Theodore. Okay. Great prospect. This guy was good, great uh, in, in his junior. Um, and Anaheim is really deep on defense. And you know those core guys are getting older. Your Kessler, your... Uh, Gets Lava and your Perry. They're getting older. They're going to want to win again. Randy Carlisle is uh, is doing great things down there, but they need more scoring. What do the Leafs have? They have uh, well, young scoring. Gl- a glut Forward, of scoring forwards. forwards. Yeah. So I'm thinking, and I mean, the history is there of trading back and forth, Anaheim and, and yeah. Toronto, multiple times. And usually Toronto gets the better of that deal. Yeah. So I, I, I think that is a potential move. There, there are a few... Uh, Few defensemen down there, uh, Montador, but it sounds like Anaheim's pretty high on them, uh, on on him. So I think Shea Theodore is the, is the one to go after, and uh, yeah, I mean Josh Levo maybe or somebody like that. They've got Kasperi Kapanen who's yeah, they look at uh, he's been and injured, guys, but he I was think. tearing up the AHL. Um, Leipzig as Ka- well. Kapanen yeah. and Leipzig, they're both injured right now, I believe, uh, yeah. for the Marlies. But those are two guys, I think. As opposed to going for a Shattenkirk who's yeah. 27 <clears throat> years old and, and will be commanding that 6 or $7 million deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to... Um, oh, I got another thing. Crosby on uh, career point nine nine nine. Uh, and oh, you know I he's going to hit 1,000. Well, you yes, know that? I did it's not all know over. That. Okay. Anyways, yeah, he's going to hit 1,000 before, before you know it. Yeah. Uh, he's the 12th fastest at all time. Uh, to to do it, and I really don't think we're giving it. Like we talked about it uh, a couple weeks ago, um, Sedin he he broke the thousand point mark. Ovechkin broke the thousand point mark. There's only five, 85 players all time that have done that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I think we're in a, in a great time for hockey right now. I mean, there's. They say scoring's down, but yet all these guys are hitting the thousand point mark. Oh like yeah, it's... I don't even. Be- I mean, you can look at the stats about the scoring's down, but I mean, I just witnessed a seven-one game last night. Exactly. Like, like I don't think scoring is that far down, uh, and I think a lot of these players, like you're saying, all these guys are hitting these big milestones now, and it's because of the the way the game is being played now. It's speed. Yeah, it's a speed, and it's a big a big man's game. You got to be fast, and you can score. And um, exactly, and, and, he, getting... and like Mike Babcock says, you play right, <laughs> and you play fast. Like yeah. if you're doing the things on the defensive end, it generates scoring chances. Mm. And 
I mean, uh, these coaches come in with their systems and everything. Like, everybody talks about a system. It's a free-flowing game. There's only so much you can do as a coach to put a system in place. Players have to react to what's happening, happening on the ice. And you, and you see, see the other night, Crosby takes a, a pass off his skate in stride and boots it up to himself. Mm -hmm. He almost scored on the play. He ended up getting stopped. But, I mean... There is some serious talent in this league right now. And you, you're talking about a 19-year-old kid in Austin Matthews who's, by all accounts, got to be one of the top 10 players in the league, mm -hmm. at least. I'd at say, 19. I'd say the state of the game, especially hockey right now, is definitely mm -hmm. right where it needs to be. Yeah, I think we're doing all right. I think we're going to, on that note, uh, head over to some baseball talk because we got a little Blue Jays, uh, a Blue Jays news to pass along. So don't go anywhere. MLB talk is next. Hitting is not about muscle. It's simple physics. Do you drug test the players? No. On into the windup in his first offering. Just a bit outside. You stink, Strawberry. We want home run homer. Daryl. Daryl. Hey, Yankees. You can take your apology out of your trophy and shove it straight up your ass. And we're back with a little uh, spring training MLB uh, segment of Sports Chatter with Bax and Pattern. We'll start with the Blue Jays. Yeah, uh, pitchers and catchers report for all teams down to Dunedin. Uh, that was yesterday. They had their first uh, workouts uh, today. Before we get to the uh, the Blue Jays, I wanted to talk about uh, the Yankees. Because, uh, hey, Yankees, right? Uh, they signed Chris Carter, $3 million uh, deal, one-year deal. Uh, this guy had 41 homers last year. It's a little surprising that he, a it took so long for this guy to sign, and b that he signed for so little. And um, well, I, I, mean, I think there's something going on. You kind of feel like the Jays got hosed a little bit with well, Morales and, and with Joey Bats as well. Well, I think I think Morales, well, Morales and Joey Bats both hit for average a lot better than Chris Carter does, I That's believe. True. But um, but but there has to be. Some, I mean, no other teams went after this guy. Yeah, there has to be a reason why yeah. no other teams went after this guy, and why he's only signing for three million dollars. Yeah, maybe got, there might be something. Wanted to there. be a Yankee, maybe, but Pins I mean, stripes. he's really he left a lot of money on the table if that's the case. These Yankees Judging do look his, good, though. They're like, young and they're going to be fast. Yeah. yeah, should yeah. be interesting. Um, so we'll stay in the division because the Jays, um, they have reported, and uh, we had a little bit of breaking news on the show here right now. Uh, I know they were talking to Matt Ooh. Latos, but they're also having preliminary talks with uh, pitcher Edwin Jackson. So they're looking at a couple of starting pitchers there in Latos and Jackson maybe to kind of shore up the depth. Yeah, uh, interesting moves. Uh, Strowman also, he won his arbitration case. Yep, so so he gets a nice pay raise, $4.3 million. And I think four point three mil for a guy that can get you 15 to 20 wins and, you know, 200 innings yeah, almost if, every year is, I think he'll, I think that's a pretty solid deal. If he can bounce back from his last year, I mean, he wasn't great. He wasn't terrible, but he, he wasn't great. He think of it this year, Stroman, as well. in one of the best rotations in the game, Stroman, who was only making now 4.3 million, was the fourth best, maybe even the fifth best in that rotation behind Liriano. Yeah. I mean, and you've got guys like Estrada and Happ who are just tearing it up and Sanchez, obviously the ace, like... It's, it's very interesting to see the dynamic of that rotation this year. I think uh, Sanchez gets the, the opening day starter. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, th I think he'll be the number one starter yeah. for sure. Yeah. But and then we'll see uh, after that how it all plays out if they go righty, lefty, righty, and then we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Bigini may, may start in AAA if they do not sign Jackson and Late or Latos. Uh, that, that's just uh, breaking news today, so I wasn't really planning on talking about that. Yeah. But if they get one of those guys, Bigini can go back into that bullpen. All of a sudden, that bullpen looks a lot a lot stronger than it did. Yeah, I'd like to see Biagini in there. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to eventually stretch him out to be a starter if he can if he can uh, maintain his his velocity and everything like that because you can never have too many starters, but mm -hmm. I mean, he looks good in that bullpen and he does well. Um, by all accounts, uh, Russell Martin coming into camp nicely. He's coming that, into camp uh, very healthy. Knee knee surgery. Yep. Uh, I guess he looks schvelt. And, and it's kind of shocking that Team Canada didn't want him on there. He's kind of crushed personally that he couldn't play for the team. I would be as well. I mean, well, you want to play for your nation. Insurance reason, right? Insurance reason. But, I mean, if he's 100% healthy, why not have him in there? The Jays, though, with Russell Martin and a backup, who's only 31. I didn't know Jared Saltzlamaki is only 31 yeah. years old. Salty. He's going to be a very competent backup, a guy that will be able to play once or twice a week, and Martin will be able to get the load off a bit this year. Yeah, uh, fingers crossed. I mean, Salty, not a great uh, defensive catcher. Okay on, on the offense, but 
I mean, he's got to be an upgrade on Tolly, right? Uh, I think he is an upgrade on Tolly. Uh, the big talk this week as well, um, heading into spring training, is who's going to win that first base job? Who's going to play the most minutes at first base? And I think Steve Pierce and Justin Smoke, they're going to have a platoon, but somebody's got to got to yeah. win the win the, the balance there. They've got a couple young guys that uh, I mean could be moving along faster than they they originally thought, which uh, which could be nice. Uh, Nothing to help him this year, though. I don't yeah, think. Possibly, if you're talking Rowdy Tellez, I don't think he's I am even talking close. Tellez, I don't yeah. even think he's close. Really? I don't think he's going to be. He, he may play double A. Good. He may play double A this year, but I, he's not major league. I think ready, he I starts think. in triple A, and maybe they bring him up, give him a taste. That's interesting. That's interesting. Because I, I mean, he can play first base. He's uh, I, I, by all accounts a decent hitter. Remember, there's it's only a 25 man roster, and if you're bringing up Rowdy Telez, that means that Smoke or Pierce does not make the team. That or maybe another. Yeah, I'm okay with either of that. Well, well, you're paying Pierce a lot of money. Send Smoke. And down. Ryan Goins is your is your backup uh, utility infielder. I think it was it Goins and Barney. I believe they signed Barney as well. Yes. So uh, both of them are going to be in the mix. Yeah, which I mean, defensively, I think Goins is better than Travis. And Travis is supposed to be your starter. Well, because well, he can hit. Is, he can hit. Well, yeah, but he also gets injured. Yeah. Every other game. Yeah. But he's supposed to be now. Travis, if this lineup is going to work, he's got to be your leadoff hitter. That yeah, or Jose does. has to go up there. But. Yeah, I think they start with Travis because he does have a. He hits better for average. And, I mean, he's not going to go uh, for too much power, but the guy can go first to third. He can go mm-hmm. second to home on a single, that kind of thing, right? So he's got some okay speed, but. I He's a big boy, too. So, so other than these little uh, infield battles um, in spring training, I think the whole team as a whole pretty much is locked down. Uh, I mean, maybe Pompey in the outfields, you know, battling for the left field spot, but Upton's there, too. Carrera's there. Yeah. And, I mean, you're gonna you're not going to take... Um, Pilar. Well, Pilar is the center fielder already. You're not going to take Pompey, I don't think, over Carrera or Upton unless he really lights it up. I think Pompey is going to start in uh, with Buffalo. Yeah, he does have the speed, though, which, uh, I mean, this... Atkins and, and Shapiro are looking for a speed guy. If he can shore up the defensive, I mean, he can't be. Well, Upton has worse the speed than, too. Upton is probably one of the fastest guys. Yeah, but guys he can't on get team. on base. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see in the spring training how um, how it all shakes down. I think the pitcher, the, well, especially the rotation is set. Uh, the bullpen is pretty much set. Uh, you've got your kids in behind your your veterans there. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see this batting order. I mean, like you said. Uh, it just sounds like Travis is going to hit one. Does uh, Donaldson, well, Donaldson hit two? Donaldson continues to hit two, and then you go. I'd like Bautista. to see Tulo, Tulo moved up to get a few more at bats in, just because uh, I think he needs to get more more at bats in, get more comfortable. I mean, you haven't seen his offense the way it was uh, in Coors Field, and that could be the Coors Field effect. I mean, it's going to be his uh, well, second yeah. full full season mm-hmm. uh, in the Rogers Center or yep. Sky Dome, we like yep. to call it. Uh, I'd like to see him get going a little more. I mean, you don't mind him not hitting as much, but it's glaring when nobody else is hitting either, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, his defense is immaculate. He's one of the best shortstops uh, in the league, if not the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, just it would be nice to see that back get going. Yep. So we're going to talk uh, a lot more MLB as uh, spring training is uh, gets going and games start when happening. stuff actually starts happening? Well, when games start happening in about a week or two. Um, but uh, before we move on from baseball, we've got one more thing to talk here. Um, uh, a lot of talk this week about uh, rule changes. And um, the extra innings rule change has been the, the biggest one. We'll add in the strike zone. But we'll talk uh, extra innings really quick first. Uh, runner on, on second base to start if a game is tied going into extra innings. Do you agree or disagree with this? I I disagree with this. Absolutely not, Brandon. Like, this is, that's ridiculous. And by all accounts, it sounds, uh, Jason Gurley did a whole big piece on it. He hates the idea of it. All pitchers would hate the idea. (laughs) Well, yeah. But it's not baseball. I mean, that's the stuff we do in beer league. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you you just want to get the game over with. Yeah, and I don't think that there's, I mean, there's the odd game that goes 18 innings, and a, a Jays fans have seen this a few times, well, but I mean, for the Ryan most part, it doesn't happen. For the most part, this doesn't happen. Games are over pretty quick. Yeah. Um, time in between innings could could be sped up a bit even more. They've got a clock on it now, though. The other thing was the uh, strike zone and, and raising the strike zone a bit. Um, uh, do you think that that's... That one I can kind of see, but just because the... Uh... The umpires are calling strikes lower and lower, and you see that against guys like uh, Jose Bautista a lot. But 
uh, even if they raise it up, they're still going to call strikes low. So Well, think about this, difference? too. You've been judging your umpires, and umpires take the brunt of uh, officiating woes from fans more than any <laughs> other referee. You've been judging them a certain way for all these years. All of a sudden, you raise the grade. You raise where you're getting judged, and you're thrown into the fire. Yeah. How, like, how is that going to work? Well, yeah, you got to... I mean, they, they're they throwing both of these roles down into the minor leagues. I believe... Uh, uh, single A or triple A mm-hmm. uh, or double A there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I just don't see either of them sticking around too much. No, I'm a traditionalist with baseball. You don't need to change the game. I think it's, uh, it's great the way it is as well. We were talking NHL earlier. The game has never been better. And uh, baseball is uh, very similar to me. Uh, we're going to head on to some injury reports. So uh, stick around for some injury news. Ah! Ah! Oh, look at that! Oh my goodness! It just dropped the, the stretcher. Oh my goodness! I think I'll lose. And again, I have no idea what that is. Um, That's what you want to know? <laughs> Your manager said you were sick. Yeah, I had an idea. Yeah, we've got some injury uh, injury reports. Uh, as you know, spring training started uh, the other day. Alex Reyes of the uh, St. Louis Cardinals, right hand pitcher, 22 years old, and he's out for 20 uh, for uh, Tommy John surgery. Yep, so uh, another young pitcher uh, getting Tommy John, uh, very similar to, um, to to a lot of the other young uh, young stars. Uh, a lot of Mets pitchers have had that uh, yeah. done to them. But, uh, I mean, maybe it's for the better. I mean, it, uh, a lot of these guys. By all accounts, it, it comes back. Yeah. They come back, and they're throwing harder, which. It sucks for the team for this year, obviously. But, yeah. like, uh, I mean, I guess they're looking ahead to 2018 for this kid now. I guess so. Kevin Love out, uh, <laughs> knee injury. For a month and a half. We kind of touched on it earlier. Um uh, wondering if the Raptors are trying to strike now based on on Love being out, but I think uh, you really banged the the nail on the head when you said um, LeBron. he's going to be you well. Know, LeBron is there, and he's going to be a lot more fresh uh, a little further into the season and into the playoffs. You have a fresh Kevin Love, so for sure uh, it could benefit them. Patrick Patterson still out. Yeah, he's uh, out tonight, and uh, no Serge Ibaka tonight either, as the game is uh, got going from Air Canada Center now. Um, so yeah, Pat, uh, no Patterson, but you've got. Um, You've got a lot of hope for him coming back soon. He's been practicing in yeah. the last uh, the last week or so, full practice. So he should be back right after the All Star break, along with Serge. The team should be fully healthy and ready to go. For sure, uh, Joel Embiid, uh, he's injured. Note uh, with his knee, he's not going to uh, do anything in the All Star uh, event. He wasn't named an All Star, but he was going to participate in the uh, the Young Stars and that kind of thing. And when is he not injured, really? Well, true enough. <laughs> he's always injured, and you know what? He's a great player. I have him on my fantasy team. I'm going to miss him. But, um, but yeah, he's he, he's injured all the time. Um, hopefully he can uh, get healthy before over this all-star break and uh, down the stretch drive here. Not that the Sixers really need him because they're not in the race, but uh, it would be nice to see him play because he's quite the player. Trust the process, right? Trust the process. <laughs> the injury healing process. Yes. <laughs> Jabari Parker is out 12 months for an ACL t- tear. That's another uh, big fantasy box. player going down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I mean, the ACL, that's a big one. Yep. And uh, you see a lot of basketball players get this injury. Um, it sucks for the Bucks. It does suck uh, for the It Bucks. sucks for the Bucks. Not that they were really in the race either, but, I mean, he's one of their best players. Um, yeah. So it, it's, it's going to be tough for the, for him to come back from that. That's uh, halfway through next season when he'll yeah. be back. So well, more than halfway tough, almost. Tough, uh, tough break for them. Yeah, by the time he gets back in a game shape, he's going to miss all of next season almost. Mm-hmm, pretty really. much, yeah. Uh, and uh, another injury report. I mean, this guy's been uh, out for a bit now. And Leaf fans, you will be uh, familiar with him. David Clarkson. Uh, there there was a piece written, uh, a big interview with him. Uh, I believe it was in the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, this guy can barely get out of bed these days. His back is so messed up. He's got to have painkillers, epidurals. Uh, and you don't like to see that with anybody. Uh, I mean, you this guy... You got the Leafs got rid of him. Well, yeah. But, I mean, you hate to see it, though. No, you feel empathy for the guy. Sure, he's getting paid, what, $7 million to, to, to sit at home. But, I mean, what kind of kind of life is that? Yeah. you got to feel empathy for the guy. And, uh, yeah, and it wasn't his fault Brian Burke and Nona lost their mind on him and yeah. threw out boats all those of money. money. I loved him. He used to play for the Kitchener Rangers. Yep. He's still, by all accounts, uh, does Clarkie's kids, uh, a, a big, uh, big help uh, charity down there. So... I mean, hopefully he can kind of get better. Uh, Tiger Woods pulling out of a press conference today because oh, yeah? he couldn't get out of bed because <laughs> of his back. 
Oh my gosh. So I mean there was talk of him possibly trying to get uh get ready for the master. I don't I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, he, his injury woes are going to continue. We'll see uh we'll see how that goes um as yeah, we get closer it, to the major tournaments in golf. Uh we'll follow Tiger Woods obviously. Yeah, absolutely. I mean love Tiger Woods. Yeah. Uh, I mean he was a great player. He's what got me into golf. Uh it's just a shame to see a legend go out like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on from the injury report to the Ooh, Heatley Watch. Everybody's favorite segment. The Heatley Watch will be uh, right on the other side of this break. Okay, it's time for the easiest part of any coach's job. The cut. Dan Healy, you know, I'm going to slump you. I'm an all-star, so. Who's, who's that? That's right! Who do you think you are? I am! You tried your best, and you failed miserably. The lesson is, never try. Now, who are you again? Well, we've gone heavy on the NBA, so let's do an NBA uh, former second-round pick, 39th overall in 2010, to the uh, Knicks. Landry Fields. Landry Fields. This guy, probably best known for his PSP commercials. <laughs> uh, you got to love him on the PSP commercials. The NBA, yeah. the NBA PSP commercials, you know, playing himself on there, you know, doing some moves. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like you said, drafted by the Knicks, and then he was a Toronto Raptor for a bit there, a bench player. was supposed to be pretty good. Was supposed to develop in, into quite a player. Never amounted to anything, really. No, he didn't. Like, I, I think I asked you every once in a while, hey, what yeah. happened to Landry, Landry yeah. Fields? Yeah. No idea. And Anyways, he's a he's a college <laughs> scout for San Antonio Spurs now. Uh, <laughs> and the guy's only 28 years old. So he's gone back to school is what you're saying. He's gone back to school. Well, not quite. <laughs> I, I mean, hopefully he's got more talent scouting than he did on the court. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe nobody gave him gave him another chance. No, after, but the uh, Spurs trust him in his basketball judgment. That's kind of interesting. That is. Uh, considering the Spurs are a very tight knit group over there, they have a, quite the system. Uh, they throw Landry Fields in there. I wonder how that's gonna. <laughs> I, I think the most shocking part about that is he's only twenty eight. Yeah, that is. That, I mean, I thought he was mid thirties at least. At least. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> that's our uh, that's our Heatley watch this week. Landry Fields, that's what he's doing now. We'll be back after this. We'll talk our goats for this week. So what you're saying is we're at this level, but we got to get to this level. I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. A cool dude, a good teammate, good attitude about things, probably get some chicks. Yes, this is the GOAT segment, the greatest of all time, at least for this week. Uh, mine's for last week. Uh, bringing it back, gotta go Gronk. <laughs> I gotta go Gronk. This guy didn't even play in the Super Bowl, <laughs> but nobody celebrated harder than Gronk. No, you can't say Rob that Gronkowski. Gronk, you can't say that Gronkowski doesn't celebrate. No, you, 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 I mean he is the biggest partier I've seen. To be fair, he was gonna take it easy, but the fans wanted him to go the fans full Gronk. It, yeah. He gives the fans what they want. This guy is an absolute legend. I, I mean. He's doing he's doing commercials, power and energy drink commercials. Oh yeah, like he's, he's got his own everything. monster energy. Yep. Oh, this yep. guy's a beauty. So uh, the the question is, is he going to be back with the Patriots next week? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> is he absolutely. actually going to play? Is he going to be in? Well, uh, hopefully he plays because this guy <laughs> is a fantastic talent. Yeah, uh, he has go quality talent. Every I mean, he could have a three touchdown, two hundred yard game, and he'll be our goat uh, in the, the season ne- coming up. But, um, I mean, I'm, he's got to stay healthy. I'm all about the off-field. The off-field goatness. <laughs> it's amazing. And my uh, on-ice goatness, I guess you could <laughs> say, this week is uh, Austin Matthews of the Leafs. Uh, he had another, a couple other goals last night uh, in their big 7-1 win. Uh, through 55 games this year, the kids got 27 goals, 19 assists. Remember, he's only 19 years old. And um, almost 200 shots on goal. This kid is the real deal. Um, he's showing the Leafs why they drafted him uh, because he is just uh, putting up points, almost a point per game player. Um, even though Line A got hurt, he is still blown Line out of the water with uh, point wise. Um, Austin Matthews right now is my goat, and, and he's only a couple goals behind Sidney Crosby for the league leading goals. And Wendell Clark's rookie record of 34 is in jeopardy of being uh, uh, broken this year. He's on pace for 40, um, but uh, for a teenager, uh, that's a Leaf rookie. Uh, he's already got 27 goals, uh, like we said, on pace for 40. 
Yeah, and I mean, all these rookies on the Leafs have, have been amazing. Oh. Nobody's a- averaging more than 18 minutes on ice. So you it's know it's just depth, and, and he, uh, Babcock's spreading that ice around. Everybody's mm-hmm. getting their chance. Uh, yeah. you know. Three solid lines there right now, Roland. So uh, Austin like Matthews. For a five-year plan, I think this is going to be two or three. Yeah, I think it, they've really they've really sped it up, that's for sure. And sped it up in a good way, not necessarily the negative way that we yeah, thought not in the Brian could Burke happen. Way. Not in the Brian Burke way, yeah. The 18-wheeler is still on the road. So that's our GOATs this week, Rob Gronkowski and Austin Matthews. When we come back, we're going to clean everything up. we got the clean-up segment to round out the show. Clean up. Hey, clean up on aisle four. Clean up on aisle three. Oh, we're going to need a clean up on aisle three. Clean up on aisle three. I got it. Testosterone spill on aisle four. Clean up in all the aisles. Yes, it is a clean-up segment of the show where we tie a bow on everything. Uh, last weekend, it was Pebble Beach, the Pro-Am, which is always a good time. It's a good time. Uh, Bill Belichick was out there swinging the sticks. I uh, had a couple nice shots. I mean, uh, for a guy who spends all of his time drawing up schemes and uh, finding new ways to cheat, uh, this, <laughs> he, he's swinging the sticks pretty nice. He's got to have something to relax, and Pebble Beach could be a nice little uh, relaxing yeah, getaway for him. No kidding. Peyton Manning was out there looking good. He even threw a, a, a pass on, uh, I think it was hole 15. And who knew football players golfed? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and p- fairly good, too. Uh, <laughs> Justin Timberlake, he's always out there looking like a beauty. If that, 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 There's nothing that guy can't do. No, that's right. He can do everything. Like he is, He's a goat, yep. for sure. He could be a future goat. <laughs> Bo Murray, of course. Course, always doing his antics. Uh, this guy, he's got a few screws loose, but he's an absolute <laughs> beauty. Uh, geared up in full Cubs attire for uh, yep. three out of the four days, yep. which has to be expected. Oh, you got it! You got to do it. Cubs fans have been waiting forever for this. Absolutely. Uh, Tiger, we mentioned he's he's pulled out uh, of the next two tournaments. Uh, big questions on whether he'll be ready for the Masters, which I mean, we know Augusta is his uh, is his uh, game. I don't know if we're ever going to see that red shirt again. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, some CFL uh, notes here in our yeah, cleanup segment. Free agency started yesterday. Yep. Uh, Chad Owens out to Saskatchewan. A couple Saskatchewan rumors, actually, with him going out there instead of uh, re-signing in the Hammer or coming back to Toronto. Yeah, I Very mean, I like that better than going to Hamilton. I think the Hamilton move was a huge slap in the face of the Argos. Oh, it was. Uh, I mean, the... the uh, <clears throat> Yeah, Chad Owens, the Hawaiian, uh, mm-hmm. was just unbelievable for the Argos for the years he was here. And then last year, kind of, uh, I believe he got injured near the end of the year uh, mm-hmm. for Hamilton, but had a decent year. Uh, now he's signed out to the Riders. And, mm-hmm. I mean, who could blame him? Uh, this Argos franchise is terrible. <laughs> they don't have a coach. They don't have a GM. Uh and another yeah. guy that I guess the Argos were looking at but uh, was rumored to be working out with the Rough Riders this week was uh, Johnny Manziel, oh, a guy boy. who we've had on uh, on the Heatley Watch. Our first ever Heatley Watch specimen was Johnny Manziel. And uh, could he be making a CFL comeback to football? I don't know if this would really work for him. His rights are uh, owned by Hamilton, so everybody would have to go uh, through Hamilton, uh, trade for his rights uh, mm. uh, to talk to him and that kind of thing. That's why the Riders rumor was such a big deal, mm-hmm. because uh, Chris Jones out there did get in trouble for this year, past season, for having... Uh, extra, an entire extra practice squad. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe they got fined sixty thousand dollars, something like that, uh, which I mean is big money for the CFL. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they got caught doing this, uh, that could be some major. That could be some big news, yeah. Well, I think the Argo should take a run at Manzo. Mm-hmm. They got to do something. Yeah, I think Ricky Ray is pretty much is pretty close to being done, and uh, I mean Menzel. If anything, he'll get the fans out. Exactly, he'll get, get the fans butts out. in the seats, and that's what yeah. they need in uh, BMO Field. Exactly. Uh, we got some UFC news. Uh, we don't really talk a whole lot of UFC on this show, but uh, we got some Canadian contact. George Saint Pierre has signed a multi fight deal with the UFC to return. I didn't think this day was going to come. Did you think this day was going to come? Uh, there was rumors about it for a while. I mean, the guy hasn't fought since 2013. He's 35 years old, but by all accounts, oh, in amazing in shape. Sh- he, some of the workout videos he has online is just phenomenal, the stuff and he's Kanye's doing. Kanye's workout oh, tape? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just absolutely in in. in peak uh, condition, uh, and I think he'd be able to fight. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes you want to watch UFC again, just being that he is Canadian. Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody other than Conor McGregor to mm-hmm. watch, right? And Dana White, uh, before they even signed him, Dana White said that he didn't have the same fire 
as um as what he used to have and when he was winning all those fights back in the day. Yeah. But uh, I think it's, he must have. Sounds he must like have they left buried the hatchet. Yeah, they must have because uh, he's back and he's going to draw some more Canadians back to the sport. I think for sure. Uh, Jeannie Bouchard. Uh, we talked about this uh, was it last week. Yeah. Uh, having that date with uh, one of the fans. Uh, that bet she is on the date tonight. Uh, they the went Brooklyn to the Nets, Nets game. game. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So that's kind of interesting and uh, and good for her. Uh, keep Follow following through. through um, and Who knows? Maybe she'll find love the day after Valentine's she Day. Might, she, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy is a pretty lucky guy, anyways. Yeah. She's in the in on this uh, on the swimsuit uh, edition magazine this that's year. Something to so, throw on uh, the resume. Something to throw on the resume for sure. Anyways, we are going to wrap up this massive show. Um, went a little long today. Oh, uh, we went a little long today, but you know what? We had a whole lot of news to talk about. So. Um, we're going to say goodbye for now, and um, remember to follow us on Twitter, B underscore, Bax underscore, for myself. Yeah, PGR10. Uh, 10 is the word, not the number. And uh, we'll talk to you again next subscribe week. Subscribe to the channel. Let's subscribe get Subscribe to the channel, yeah. And, and uh, next week, hopefully, we'll get some NFL recaps in and uh, maybe some trade deadline uh, news and notes from the NBA and the NHL. Who knows? There might be some more big news coming our way. Uh, but you have to stay tuned. Uh, this has been Sports Chatter with Bax and Patter. Pitter Patter. Let's get at her. I thought he was okay. Yeah, just okay. It's, it's not good, eh? It's terrible. Screw you guys. I'm going home.